Okay, so this is my Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig, and uh, it's running Windows 10 from an SSD. I did two previous videos on Windows 10 uh, with the 3 gig fix, so the sort of newest iteration of Windows 10. Uh, this is Amir's latest build, which is called Heavy Falcon, which is 0 0.2.4, uh, and it is very good. Uh, it's supposed to be more compatible. He says it's not quite as fast, but now I'm running it on an SSD. It's super quick. So let's plug it in and show you how quick it boots up. So you heard it switch on. Go to the monitor, and you'll see that it boots really nice and fast. So into the UEFI. Zips through that, it's already starting to load Windows. Then it asks for the password. And just to show you how, start, how quickly it starts up, uh, and then we can click in Windows and you can see, we can click Settings, and we can zip through this system display, sound, notifications, focus assist, power and sleep. You can see it's it's only just started up and it is super, super quick. Okay, so I'll show you how to install it. Okay, so you will need a Windows 10 computer to do all of these steps. Uh, so first of all, go to your web browser and go to the WOR project, Windows on Raspberry Pi, uh, and download this program, which is a program to write the image to your SD card SSD drive or USB stick. So if you click on that, that will download. You can see I've downloaded it here. If you open that up, it will come as a zipped file. You need to copy all of these zipped contents into a folder, and I always do it on the desktop, and I call my folder WOR, and so you can see my folder looks like this. And that's the important bit. This is the EXE, which is the file that starts it all off. But we also need an image of Windows now you can download it from the WOR site. These are both uh, Windows 10 on ARM, which is designed for Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Uh, but if you want a faster experience, go to the Windows on Raspberry Pi Discord, uh, which is run by Amir Dahan. Uh, it's a great source of information. There's also there's a chat room. There's all sorts of information in there. But you can download the software from there. Now at the moment, the one I'm using, 0.2.4, isn't available on here yet. But you can download 0.2.1. By the time you've seen this video, 0.2.4 is probably out anyway. Uh, but if you click on that file, that will download to your computer. I've already downloaded it, uh, so that's already there. So if we minimize that, open up this folder, which has got the WOR program in it. You need to plug in your SSD drive or your USB stick. Double click on the EXE file and that will launch the program. We can close this bit down now. Uh, and then you need to just follow the instructions on screen. Select your language and hit next. Click on Raspberry Pi 4 if you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't know if the SSD boot works on Raspberry Pi 3. It will be a different process, so don't use this for Raspberry Pi 3. So select the device. This is my 32 gig SSD drive. Hit next. Then you need to navigate to your Windows image that you've downloaded. So this is, in my case, this is the one I downloaded off the Discord. And mine is on my NAS drive. So this is heavyfalcon.wim. It might say .iso. It might have something else on the end there. As long as the WOR program recognizes it, it's fine. So click on that, hit open, and you can see that the selected image is good. So it likes it. So hit next. Use the latest package available on the server and hit next. This is the important bit. This is what's changed uh, and now the latest firmware has got USB boot support in it. So you're clicking on that and hit next. And then don't need to change anything here, hit next. And that will write Windows 10 to your SSD drive. As it formats and mounts your drive, you'll see things come up in front. Just go down to the bottom and click on the WOR, and then you can see this comes back. 
Okay, so that's all finished. So we can hit finish. And now we need to have a look where our version of Windows is. So you can see down the bottom here, we've got boot O and we've got Windows N. This is the important bit for patching. Now there's two ways you can do this. Uh, so WinPatch is a file uh, that you launch from command uh, and that basically patches two files and it's these two files uh, in and you can see the location here so this is Windows System 32 drivers so Windows System 32 and drivers so in this folder and I'll put a link because if you haven't got a Windows computer and you've got to this step uh, you won't be able to do this without a Windows computer um, but uh, if you drag these two files into here and just get it to replace whatever files I have had that work before but I'm going to use the traditional method now so let's close that bit down and I need to copy this win patch but I need it to say N here so what I'll do is copy it and the reason I needed to say N is because it's patching the drive that's associated with N at the moment so there you go so win patch N Windows and so what it's going to do is it's going to launch that program and when you download the win patch program uh, and I'll put a link in the description you need to put that in the root of C so on your computer you see it says C, I haven't got a lot of space there lot. this is an old 2010 Mac winpatch.exe is in the root of C so you've got it in there with your program files users and so on so then it knows where to locate it and the N knows where my drive is currently plugged in so let's copy that we go down to the bottom and type in CMD run as administrator paste, no we don't need to paste yet hold on cd dot dot cd dot dot okay so paste that in and at the end you'll get this message successfully patched uh, and you'll end up with a C prompt once that's done you can eject the drive so take the drive out pop it in the Pi uh, with just mouse and keyboard nothing else and start it up okay so I'm going to plug in uh, and I've switched over to the live bit just to show you uh, how this boots up and I've had this not work loads of times with SSD it's why I haven't covered it before now um, but it seems to be the best method is literally just to leave it and let it do all its things itself so don't press escape don't do any of that let it boot into Windows and uh, it seems to sort itself out now which it didn't before later on we'll apply the 3 gig patch okay so it's just rebooting now it does that on its own this is good again leave it don't press anything and you see that Windows resumes again and then this is just the normal setup so you're obviously answering the normal questions that you would so at this stage uh, it asks you to connect to a network now I'd avoid it at this stage because you have to use either a USB uh, Ethernet adapter or use Bluetooth and at this stage it's going to just complicate things so I always put I don't have internet and then it will prompt you again so continue with limited setup accept the license agreement and for the security questions you only need one letter so if I just do uh, a single letter for each one obviously if you're planning to use this as your main operating system then uh, are you going to register it? You want to make sure these security questions are ones that you know. Now this always says something went wrong. It's something to do with uh, Windows Hello, I think Amir had said. Um, so just skip that. And I say uh, don't and minimal to most of these. Uh, just, to, just to get it through the process. Okay, and you see, see it's booted up now. What I'm going to do just to double check is to shut down and switch it off. And just check that everything's working right uh, in the boot order and everything else. Okay, so the lights stopped flashing now, so let's unplug and plug in. So starting up with Windows. OK, 
okay and pop your password in There you go. And I think if, you, if you're getting errors when you do this, uh, just follow this video to the letter uh, because I was doing things that I'd done before and it was coming up with errors. So it looks like the WOR tool has been updated and there are less steps that you need. Um, but what you'll find if I press Control Alt Delete uh, and go into Task Manager, it's still only using one gig of RAM at the moment. There you go. I'll just switch over to screen capture. Okay, so now we need to apply the three gig patch, which basically means that uh, Windows will recognize three gig of RAM rather than one gig. So if we go to the bottom here, type in CMD and run as an administrator. Now if I copy from this text file, now I've just put this in here just to make it easier for me. Uh, so copy this text, I'll put it in the description and then paste it in, hit return. This operation completed successfully. We should be there now, so let's shut that down. Again, I'm gonna turn it properly off. Okay, so I'm gonna let it restart normally again. Uh, I like to do things one thing at a time rather than trying to do multiple things. That's where I've kind of messed up in the past. So let's just check the three gig of RAM is working, and then I'm gonna apply the 720 resolution Okay, we're back in again, control alt delete task manager, performance, and we've got three gig of RAM. So we are now running from an SSD with three gig of RAM using Amir's latest build, and uh, I need to play around with it, but I want to install some things today. Uh, if, I, if I overclock, I'm not going to overclock for now, I'm going to use it uh, without overclocking. If you look at my other video, I'll link it in the description, which shows you how to overclock and do several other things, and also explain which bits are and aren't working, uh, if you have a look at those. But that's it, that's how you set it up to run from an SSD. Uh, the other thing you might want to do, this is running in 1080 at the moment, to increase performance you can run the Pi at 720 or even 640 by 480 if you're going to run some old games on it and I've got some other videos of me running Half-Life, uh, GTA and some other games on the previous build to this one. So let's shut it down and do the last thing and I'll basically change it to 720. So shut down. Okay, so you press escape on startup. Now sometimes the UEFI boot doesn't show up. Just restart it or shut it down and start it again uh, and it will show up. Once you've got it, go to device manager, Raspberry Pi configuration, display configuration and 720 and uncheck native resolution. That means that it will go a maximum to 720. You can change this to any of the other values if you want, but I find 720 tends to be, it looks good, the resolution is decent, and also the performance is good. So let's press F10 to save that. Yes to confirm. Exit out of that. And hit continue. And enter to reset. So that's starting up normally. And it does seem to be a lot quicker than the SD card boot. I mean, obviously, SSD is much faster. If you have a look at some of my speed tests I've done on SSD, uh, it's even these low-cost ones, and I'll put a link to the SATA adapter and the SSD drive in the description, but even these low-cost devices give a huge performance boost, and that's what Windows needs. Uh, and actually, it works really, really well now. So thanks to Amir. Thanks to everybody in the forums uh, and uh, the Discord. It's, uh, it's been a great help, and there you go, you can see it's running at 720. Thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.